So here on HDTV Test, I've tested mini LED TVs, but this is the first mini LED monitor I've received for review. It's the ASUS ProArt PA32UCXP, a 32 inch 4K HDR monitor that's aimed at video content creators, featuring a true 10 bit panel with native UHD resolution of 3840 x 2160, mini LED backlighting, 1152 full array local dimming zones acclaimed peak brightness of 1200 nits, as well as support for all the key HDR formats of HDR10, HLG and even Dolby Vision which is very rare among monitors. Let's see how it performs. Hello everyone, my name is Vincent Thieu and I am a technical reviewer who's trying to produce more of my videos in HDR if I can find the time. When grading and producing HDR content, it is extremely beneficial to have an HDR monitor to see the final results on the fly, and this is where the ASUS PA32UCXP can help. This 4K HDR monitor uses mini LED backlighting, which shouldn't be confused with self emissive micro LED technology. Mini LED TVs and monitors are still transmissive displays, in that they are LCD panels which require a backlight. But thanks to the miniaturized size of these mini LEDs, more diodes can be packed into the backlight module, allowing for more local dimming zones and hence better light control. In fact, the ASUS PA32UCX has 1152 independently dimmable zones, arranged in a 48 by 24 grid when we did a zone count using our own custom order test pattern containing a small white box crawling horizontally and then vertically against the borders of a black background. Before cracking on with the rest of our picture quality findings, first let's cover the design of the monitor. The thin bezel sits alongside the LCD screen beneath the front glass, giving a very classy frameless appearance. The chassis is thick, presumably to provide adequate cooling for over 1000 mini LEDs capable of more than 1000 nits full screen. The internal fan kicks in especially when playing HDR content, generating more noise than the Apple Pro Display XDR which is of course fanless. Ergonomics are excellent, with sufficient height, pivot, tilt and swivel adjustability to cater for most needs. The connections are found at the back of the monitor, all facing downwards, making access quite difficult. There are three HDMI 2.0b ports with HTCP compliance, a DisplayPort 1.2, 3 USB 3.0 inputs, and 2 Thunderbolt 3 ports, 1 in and 1 out. The supplied stand weighs a ton, featuring a rectangular base with golden inscriptions, as well as a pedestal column with a slot through which you can route some cables. The on-screen display or OSD is controlled by a joystick and some physical buttons located on the right rear of the monitor which means user have to operate the button sight unseen. I've lost count of the number of times I accidentally switched off the monitor by pressing the power button. Eventually, I figured out that everything, and I mean everything, can be controlled using the joystick. So these days, I just reach out and feel for the bulge, and take things from there. The ASUS PA32UCX is equipped with an IPS panel which typically have shallower blacks but wider viewing angles, and our review sample is the P version which features the company's off-axis contrast optimization technology, also known as OCO. In practice, the picture darkened slightly quicker off-axis compared with other IPS LCDs we've previously tested, with any blooming or hollowing artifacts becoming more obvious too. With dynamic dimming turned off which disables the local dimming, we measured a black level of 0.13 candelas per square meter once peak white was aligned to 120 candelas per square meter, giving us a native contrast ratio just shy of 1000 to 1. Three dynamic dimming levels are provided, and between gradual, medium and high, there's no difference in contrast enhancement at all, only how fast the local dimming reacts to the content on screen. With dynamic dimming engaged and peak white set to 120 candelas per square meter, black level measures 0.03 candelas per square meter on a 4x4 ANSI checkerboard pattern. 
the monitor clipped blacker than black and whiter than white by default, although you can recover the latter by setting the input range to limited 16 to 254. Next, let's talk about local dimming. While the ASUS PA32UCX has one of the highest number of zones among consumer LCD displays, it actually exhibited more blooming or hollowing than the Apple Pro Display XDR and high-end Samsung or Sony FALD LED LCDs, often seeping into the top and bottom letterbox bars during HDR playback, occasionally from bright objects which were not even directly adjacent. We strongly recommend using some sort of bias lighting to make the halation less noticeable, but in spite of following our own advice, we still saw a faint glow around white lines in our DaVinci Resolve color grading software which has a dark background. The ASUS PA32UCX ships with a calibration report confirming that the monitor has been calibrated at factory. And indeed, out-of-the-box color accuracy was impressive across the more commonly used picture presets we measured, although because all displays drift over time, periodic calibration is recommended, for example by using Kalman. In the Rec. 709 mode, which is intended for SDR video grading, average delta errors measure 1.47 without needing any calibration on our part, with no inaccuracies exceeding the humanly perceptible threshold of delta error 3. There's a brightening of gamma near black though, causing SDR content to take on a slightly milky hue despite the natural looking color rendition. For photographers, the sRGB mode was similarly accurate out of the box, this time including the transfer function too. Given that most buyers of the ASUS PA32UCX will be using it for content creation rather than content consumption, we're not sure how relevant what we're going to show within the next few minutes will be to you, but we're just including them for the sake of completeness. The monitor is not equipped with Motion Compensated Frame Interpolation or MCFI, so motion resolution came in at the sample and hold baseline of 300 lines. Engaging motion sync would activate backlight strobing with a boost in luminance or brightness, but there's no visible increase in motion resolution beyond 300 lines, even if the horizontally scrolling lines appeared slightly clearer. Upscaling of standard definition content was sharp and clean, although when dealing with interlaced video signals, the ASUS PA32UCX exhibited noticeable jaggies and line Twitter with both video-based and film-based material, so you should always send a progressive video signal to the monitor. You can even disable the internal scaling and display the source resolution 1.1 on the monitor. With sharpness set to zero, we didn't see any edge enhancement on this SDR Luma zone plate pattern or this Ryan Masiola sharpness test pattern in HDR10 and Dolby Vision formats. Full chroma bandwidth was preserved in all picture presets on this 1080p test pattern from the Spears & Munsil HD benchmark disk. Screen uniformity was excellent on our review sample, with no sign of DSE or dirty screen effect, bending or color tinting. From the camera, you may see darkening around the edges, but that's because we were filming in HDR. In real life, there's barely any vignetting at all certainly not enough to bother us in our day-to-day -day professional use. If the uniformity on your unit is not as homogeneous as ours, ASUS has provided a uniformity compensation functionality through the company's calibration software, which you can use to calibrate the backlight uniformity in a 3x3 or 5x5 grid. For HDR, Peak brightness on our review unit measured close to 1500 nits on a 10% window after calibration to D65 white point, with barely any decrease full fill, surpassing the official figure of 1200 nits quoted by ASUS themselves. Thanks to the underlying quantum dot technology as evidenced by the spectral power distribution, DCI-P3 color gamut coverage reached 99% UV and a massive 89% of Rec. 2020, the highest we've recorded to date. As a direct result of such high color volume that's totally unrestricted by ABL, bright HDR scenes looked remarkably impactful and spectacular, with the demo footage from the Spears & Munsil UHD HDR benchmark disc popping with a color vibrancy we've never witnessed before on any other display, even if there's some unavoidable blooming from time to time. In terms of HDR10 tone mapping, 
Asus offers three PQ EOTF tracking options on the PA32 UCX. PQ Optimized perform a soft roll-off near the peak brightness of the monitor to preserve more specular highlight detail, similar to what we normally see on high-end consumer televisions from A brands. PQ Clip hard clipped at the peak brightness of the monitor, mimicking the behavior of a mastering monitor. This is our preferred choice for grading 1000 nit HDR content. Last but not least, PQ Basic started the tone curve roll-off at around 400 nits, presenting more APL deviation than the other two, so we generally refrain from using PQ Basic. Next, we measured the HLG mode and found the EOTF to be reasonably accurate. The ASUS PA32 UCX is one of a handful of monitors to support Dolby Vision, and using the versatile Meridio 7G signal generator, we determined that the Dolby Vision implementation is TV-led. However, in certain Dolby Vision sequences containing bright objects against a dark background, we observed mildly elevated blacks and a distracting amount of fluctuating halation. While the blooming and luminous fluctuations remained present to a certain degree when we played the same scene in HDR10, they were nowhere as severe, making us suspect that the Dolby Vision presentation looked worse because of some strange interaction between the local dimming algorithm and the dynamic metadata. For owners wanting to play some games on the ASUS PA32 UCX, input lag measured a very responsive 10 milliseconds with dynamic dimming disabled or set to gradual, going up to 50 milliseconds with dynamic dimming set to medium or fast, since a quicker local dimming response requires heavier video processing. The monitor even supports FreeSync, with the range specified between 40Hz and 60Hz. Otherwise, for use in a room without light control, the matte screen combats reflections very well, and before I forget, the PA32 UCX is equipped with inbuilt downfiring speakers, but the sound quality is teeny. Let's just leave it at that. To sum up, the ASUS PA32 UCX is a viable choice for content creators interested in producing HDR videos or developing HDR games. Despite the very high number of local dimming zones, blooming artifacts were frequently visible in a dark room, particularly during Dolby Vision playback preventing the PA32 UCX from joining the top tier of 4K HDR grading monitors, such as the Sony HX310, the Flanders Scientific XM311K, and the ASO CG3145. Of course, these dual-layer LCD monitors would cost at least 5 figures, so it's hardly a fair comparison, considering that the ASUS PA32 UCX commands a street price between £2,500 and £4,000 depending on whether you opt for the K version, which includes an x i1 Display Pro color emitter for calibration. In my review of the 48-inch LG CX or C10 OLED, I suggested that it could be used as a client reference monitor for color grading purposes. But realistically, a 48-inch display is too big for most people as a desktop monitor. Plus, text and graphics just look so beautiful and pin-sharp on the ASUS PA32 UCX. Add in the fact that the monitor is accurately calibrated from factory for a variety of use, and is capable of reaching 1400 nits and 89% of Rec 2020 to provide an unrestricted canvas for content creators to paint their masterpiece, the ASUS PA32 UCX earns our recommended award. If you would like to find out more about other monitors you can use to perform HDR grading, please click here for a complete list of our technical reviews, and I will see you in the next video.